Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope you're having a good morning. Then I had a pretty good morning. She, uh, she had me walk her around. It's overcast and it's been raining, but there was no rain when we wanted to walk. So that worked out pretty darn well. Pretty darn well. She keeping an eye out on the squirrels, make sure they don't mess with us. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna have a some coffee here. Get my morning started, as you can tell. Uh, 51 degrees out here. Not bad for a winter time. Jan it's still January, so. January in Texas, this is about what winter time usually is. Mm. Ah, nice warm coffee gets started. So, <clears throat> today I want to talk about the loss of rights. Sometimes We get rights taken away. Most of the time, those the removal of those uh, rights or liberties are done in a way that helps the society work better together. It helps everyone. Um, Helps everyone have a better experience living with others. Um, and sometimes those rights make it a safer and better world we live in. So uh, I'll talk about, um, I'll give you an example. This is one I grew up with. When I was a, a young man and uh, was about to learn how to drive and stuff like that, uh, seat belts were not mandatory. Uh, seat belts were installed in almost every car. Uh, it was rare to find a car that didn't have seat belts. The uh, mandatory requirement uh, for new cars, I'm pretty sure, was already in. And the seat belts were added over time. And uh, I'm sorry, before that, there were some cars you get into and they wouldn't have seat belts. It was real strange. So, anyways. Um, but nobody was required to wear seat belts, and it wasn't uncommon for me to ride in a car as a passenger before I got my license. <coughs> Excuse me, and not have the pert driver wear a seat belt. And it wasn't unusual for me to have the driver make fun of me if I put my seat belt on, which I did. I thought I wasn't really doing it for safety reasons. I kind of thought it was just a little bit cool because that's what race car drivers use was seat, uh, seat belts. And so I just thought it was a little bit Um, advanced and I've always been a little bit of a geek and it's, it was kind of like a technology in a very strange kind of um, format but still I thought of it much more like a, uh, a, a technology so while I was
while I was getting my license and uh, progress, progress was being made. Uh, um, now the uh, the rules came out that you had to drive with your seatbelt on, and they made it illegal to not drive with a seatbelt on. First, they did it for the driver, and then they did it for the passenger. And that rule took away the freedom of choosing whether you want to ride with the seatbelt on. That's a, an example of a choice that um, was, I mean, a lot of people didn't like the fact that they had to be forced to do that. And, and, it, and it caused a lot of pushback from people. But the thing that happens, even though something like that may save lives and cause a lot less uh, injuries and accidents for people, it was still seen as a removal of a right to choose. So what happens in a society is you have a little bit of a pushback and people would uh, fake having a seatbelt on. People would uh, simulate uh, connections because we had a little, if you didn't have your seatbelt in, it went ding, ding, ding on your car. It still does that. But um, people would add little wires so that that ding never happened or remove the, the apparatus that was making the noise. So there was a little bit of a pushback. But over time, something that becomes universally accepted, it goes away. So those people that ridiculed me for wearing a seatbelt while they were driving, they would say, ah, you think I'm a bad driver? Is that why you're putting a seatbelt on? Those, they, they went away. Nobody says anything to you now when you put your seatbelt on. If anything, they they said is everybody got their seatbelts on before we go or drive or something. <clears throat> so that uh, change happens over time. You you have a society develop around stuff. Then there are and it improves things. Okay, so that's definitely an accepted improvement. So now let's let's go and look at things that are a little bit more gray. So one of the things that's a little more gray <coughs> is <laughs> Yeah, you threw it kicked it underneath there. So one of the things that a little more gray, the Jesus is getting, she just bothered me this morning. She's having, she's having a fun time, as you can tell. She's had a, I didn't get to take a walk yesterday. I hurt my ankle a little bit. It's better now. It's, it was a minor thing. It went away. Improved rare, really quickly. <laughs> okay. So here's one of the things that, happened to me when I was young and I I personally didn't like how it happened I understood what was going on so in the United States you have to be 21 to buy alcohol legally my lot my daughter's been over to Europe I've only been to Ireland I haven't been to much of Europe but she said most of Europe at 16 and most of South of the United States, it's uh, it's 18. But in the United States, it's 21. Now, when that came out, it's a, it's a state law. The thing that 
I didn't like too much was the government decided that it would be a national law, but they didn't have the power to mandate a uh, age limit for buying alcohol, but they had money. So they said, if you don't make your drinking age 21, we will not allow you to have funds <clears throat> for any of the highways that you want to build. And so all that money that we're millions and millions of dollars that we were going to give you for building a bridge or a highway, and they're not going to give it to you unless you say that's legal drinking age is 21. So my state that I was in at the time was Tennessee, and they had a rule of uh, 18 at the time. So they had quite a few projects they want to get done, so they switched it to 21. Mississippi, which was just a little south of me, still had it 18 for quite some time. They knuckled under after a while. But that removing that right roiled a lot of people. And that's one of those rights I don't think has gone away. You know, we still talk about dropping the voting age down to 16 occasionally. But we've never talked about dropping the alcohol age down. And there's states now that are looking at uh, Colorado and uh, California where you can smoke marijuana in your house or in your apartment, but you can't smoke a cigarette. Uh, I shouldn't say your house, but there's a lot of places that uh, don't allow you to vote, uh, smoke a cigarette. And a lot of people are like, but they're both smoking. They both have secondhand stuff. Oh, but it's different. Is it? Why? So it's interesting. But let's talk. So those are some examples. I have one more example of a right that was taken away that uh, I can't remember what it was. So a lot of times when rights are removed, like the seatbelt one, it's just a matter of time. You can get used to it. Oh, there was the, uh, I remember, we got rid of... Uh, uh, incandescent light, they used a lot more energy. Now we used uh, LED. Now, that was one that uh, I think a lot of people have generally come to accept. And even though they're more expensive, they last a lot longer. So they seem to be a uh, a good monetary change as well as the fact that it uses less electricity. So that was good. And it seems to be fairly well accepted. It's very rare for me to run into somebody that has wishes they had the old uh, incandescent bulb for some, for a purpose or reason. Uh, I think the ones that another one I ran into was got people that had the, like the lizard and snake things where they needed a little bit of heat for them, so they had to find something besides the bulb, <laughs> which was really easy and convenient for them. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, so there you go. Those are some examples. But let's talk about if you peel people's rights off, Most of the time, the generation that had the right needs to die off and go away in order for the people that are new that never had the right to go, well, it's just the way it is. That helps if you have people across the globe doing exactly the same thing. 
I think that the biggest problem with 21 for drinking age in the U.S. It has a lot to do with the fact that it's not so universally accepted internationally. Um, but that loss of a, a right slowly changes as people go away. And in fact, if I look at the Bible, sometimes it takes the removal of a generation in order to get a really strong change to happen. When the uh, Jews left uh, Egypt, they didn't trust God in that. They had been mentally and physically attached so much to a, um, a dynasty that was extremely powerful and provided security and removed their the threat of uh, military people coming in and getting them. They just were enslaved. And I'm not saying that it was nice and wonderful. I'm sure it wasn't. But when they were forced out into the desert, and God said, well, okay, here's some areas that I want you to take over because it's part of your destiny. They went, oh, gosh, it's scary. And we may not be able to do this because we don't have the ability to fight. And God's like, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to let you all die out. I'm going to let that generation die out. We'll just wander the desert. I'll provide you food. You'll be fine. But you'll never see the promises that I just wanted to bestow on you. I'll just, I'll just wait. And then after a while, they died out. And the new generation came in. And it went on to do stuff take advantage of those uh, promises. So, I guess long story short, or long story longer, <laughs> the, uh, when you lose rights, you shouldn't be happy about it. You should never be ecstatic about somebody removing a right. But you should also think about the long-term implications and understanding of where that uh, right removal wants everybody to be with the next generation, what they are trying to get done. And it's not always good. I mean, I, I've given some good examples. There's a lot of bad examples. There's a lot of things that were removed for monetary reasons and control reasons. Um, you know, we're battling right now with freedom of speech. Some people say you shouldn't have it because it's bad for society. You can say something that is a falsehood, which damages people and makes them suffer. And others say, but if I don't have the freedom to speech, how do I make sure the system isn't taking advantage of people and insidiously destroying and doing more damage than that person that said that inconsistent thing? So these things are definitely problems that having a right have a huge impact. 
I personally like rights. I like the freedoms. I like a lot of things, but I also am not naive. I buckle my seatbelt and I buckled it way back before it was legal to a law to require you to do so. And if that law went away because airbags are so much better, I probably still would buckle my seatbelt because it's cool. And I like being cool. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day. Buckle your seatbelts and enjoy this morning and this beautiful day ahead of us.